Hello and welcome to Alan History Nerd. This is the latest video on my Azaris in Communist Russia playlist where we are looking at the establishment of the Bolshevik government. So this leads on from videos that I've done on the 1917 February Revolution, the Provisional Government and the October Revolution itself. So this is designed at A-level history, in particular uh, 1H, uh, the AQA um, specification on Tsarist and Communist Russia. And, and I'm looking at this particular bullet point from the spec. Political authority, opposition and government, the Bolshevik takeover and the establishment of the Bolshevik government by Dece December 1917, including opposition. So that's what I'm going to look at. As I've said already, I've done some videos on the actual revolutions themselves, but I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of touching on that and the position in October 17. So the revolution itself, in terms of the October revolutions carried out by the uh, by the Bolsheviks, had largely been well, not really a huge revolution, but more of a, a kind of a fairly bloodless coup. Uh, bloodless isn't um, really a term we use very frequently with the Bolsheviks, as we'll we'll see uh, as we go through the Bolshevik regime. Now, what the Bolsheviks showed that they had in October 17 was leadership. I mean, from the very top, from Lenin, whose idea it was that this was the moment to seize power. Uh, leadership in terms of the casual carrying out of the revolution uh, in, in the form of Trotsky. Uh, they were a hugely dedicated revolutionary uh, group. They were well organized. They had through uh, events such as uh, the Kornlov affair and others, they, they gained, had all, control of all the weapons. They, they uh, they had loyal men on a, a battleship sat in, in on the river in the mi middle of Petrograd. So they had the men and the, uh, the men in the wherewithal to seize power. Uh, however, really, a, a big part of the story about the October Revolution was that almost no one was willing to fight to save the provisional government actually inside Petrograd. And so it, it fell with with more of a whimper than a bang, really, though there was a, was a fairly big bang from the battleship. Um, so I would suggest if you need more detail on the October Revolution, if that's what you're looking for, then see my my separate video on that. And if you want to go back to a more of a big, spontaneous, genuine revolution, then uh, go and have a look at my video on the February Revolution from earlier in that year. 1917 for this unit it is the absolute key, is the absolute crux that, that takes us through from Tsarism and then uh, into the Bolshevik era. Now, a really important part of the establishment of uh, of the Bolsheviks in power was the Second All-Russian Congress of the Soviets. So this is essentially the night after they, the Bolsheviks have seized power. Uh, and Lenin tells the Congress of also All-Russian Soviets, and, and it, was, it was Trotsky's idea in terms of getting this, this down as the timing. And he says, well, actually, look, it, it's all done. We have seized power. And we've seized power, oh, my dear Soviets, we have seize power in your name. So we'll cheer. Um, but they didn't all cheer. Uh, the, the Mensheviks and, and, and some of the SR. Now we'll, we'll see this with the SR. The SR kind of it has a division within it, it, it between the left and the right of the SR. It, again, it, remember, it is a socially revolutionary group. So, so the left is very, very left and the right is still left. It's just not as left as the left bit of it. Um, and, and some of the SR stormed out along with the with the Mensheviks, and that was often seen as, as the right of the, of the SR. And, and Trotsky famously said to the, the Mensheviks as they were were leaving that that they were heading to where they belonged, which was in the dustbin of history. So obviously the story from from now on is going to be the Bolshevik story uh, of of Russian history rather than the Menshevik one, and that's because the Bolsheviks seized the opportunity and took power and the Mensheviks had been willing to compromise and work with others and hadn't seized the moment and taken power. The remaining Bolshevik, the Bolsheviks and the remaining SR in Lenin's word would construct a towering edifice of socialism. Uh, and this would it was the beginning part of, of this Bolshevik regime. Uh, Lenin set up a new cabinet that was dominated by Bolsheviks uh, and it, this was known as the Cou Council of the People's Commissars. <coughs> or the Sovnikarum, um, and, or Sovnikum, uh, and, and and this is going to be a kind of really important uh, vehicle for Bolshevik power going forward. Now, the, there is an interesting um, group of people who are on this. It's, obviously, it's completely dominated by Bolsheviks. Now, this is just some of um, uh, the key figures. Obviously, the chairman is Lenin, who, who's um, the main guy in charge. Commissar for Foreign Affairs is, is Leon Trotsky, and famously Trotsky later on 
<clears throat> perpetuates this idea of worldwide revolution and he is kind of the the, the military organizer at this point as well comes up for internal affairs is, is a guy called uh, Alexei Rykov um, he was later in charge of the idea of war communism during uh, the civil war which um, essentially kept the Bolsheviks going but made them quite unpopular um, and we've got the Commissar for Nationalities, Joseph Stalin, who obviously is going to be a very important figure um, later on. Um, there's an image of him um, on, on the screen when he was much younger and therefore not the, the Stalin you, you might normally recognise. There's an excellent book um, called Young Stalin that I highly recommend uh, you have a read of, which if you if you want to find out uh, about where Stalin came from and, and uh, the kind of the origin story, as it were. Uh, the Commissar for Social Welfare it was, a, 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 again, a quite remarkable person, Alexandra uh, Colorante, um, and she, uh, she is the first woman in history to become an official member of a governing cabinet. Um, she is a key Marxist feminist, uh, and again, this, this kind of shows this idea of the Bolsheviks entering this kind of uh, a new world, something that is very different uh, from what's gone, gone on before, and she will... Um, play a, a kind of a key role in, in wanting to make changes uh, to things like marriage and the position of women in, in Soviet society. Uh, and she works with, works with and clashes with Lenin and she, she works um, with Stalin afterwards. I think she spends a, a lot of time actually then later on uh, as an ambassador to various countries and, and, and traveling abroad. The head of the Cheka, which was the secret police, uh, it was Felix uh, Drzezinski, uh, and he he is a key figure in the Red Terror, uh, where and where the the Bolsheviks kind of removed all all forms of opposition much late, uh, later on in in the 1920s. So we're going to see these some of these figures later on in the story, and they're they're, they're right at the beginning on, on this um, Council of the People's Commissar. On the 27th of October, so follow, following the following day, we, we get this series of decrees, and, and, and these would have been uh, very popular. They, these were a lot of things that a lot of the Russian uh, workers and peasants were hoping for. So uh, there was a decree on peace which called for an immediate truce uh, and a just peace, and again, it's about no annexations or indemnity. So the idea of that is is that they're not going to take any land off us. We're not going to take any land off them. Um, neither is it going to be uh, kind of paying money to the other. And there was an armistice signed in November 17, followed by uh, demobilisation. Now there is an argument about whether that is a, a great idea because if you start to demobilise, then you aren't militarily prepared. So if that truce armistice doesn't hold you're not in the greatest position. And we'll see some of that with the Treaty of brest in 1918. The decree on land gave peasants the right to seize land from land landlords without compensation and divide it up as they wanted. <clears throat> it sounds like it's going to cause absolute chaos. It, it did, to a large extent, cause absolute chaos. Uh, private ownership of land was abolished. It now belonged to the whole people. Uh, the key to, to gaining peasant support really is all of this, and, and it weakened the grip of the SR in the countryside to a degree, but we'll see the SR do continue to dominate in the countryside at this point. But it's a clear kind of power grab by the, the Bolsheviks to win over the peasantry. There's also for the workers an instruction of an eight hour day and, and social, insu social insurance, like national insurance and things that we had, uh, we'd, we'd seen around the same time in other countries. So. Again, a set of decrees that therefore in October that would have been largely welcomed by the Russian people, other than the landowning classes, of course, who would have been absolutely terrified. So, yeah, if you were landed in property, then not great news. If you were one of the, the poor workers and one of the poor peasantry, then really some quite good news. And again, more for these groups, which obviously are the groups the Bolsheviks want to appeal to, um, follows in November. So the, the, the decree on workers' control gave workers' committees the right to control production uh, and finance in factories and supervise the management. So we've kind of uh, really um, got a, a, a kind of things being turned on, on their head there with the workers taking over from the management. A decree on nationalities gave the, the right to self-determination to national minorities, formerly part of the Russian Empire. Um, Finland became uh, independent. Um, not long afterwards, in December, uh, Ukraine uh, set up its own uh, uh, own parliament. 
we see the uh, abolition of the previous legal system, the establishment of, of, of elected people's courts, so a kind of democratisation of, of the legal system, which is really important. Uh, we see an abolition of titles and class distinction, so um, everyone would now be, be a citizen, that party members refer to each other as comrade. Uh, and and women were declared equal to men and allowed to own property. That seems I mean, this is an enormous moment in terms of uh, of uh, gender equality. But owning property when the government are declaring that oh, there is no private ownership of property is, is maybe not quite as uh, as dramatic as it would be in other circumstances. Now, also in November, there, were, there was the um, the election to the constitute uh, assembly. Now th that that's going to 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 meet on the fifth of January in, in 1918. It met for a grand total of one day in the end, and we can see from the results here that the, the SR won. Um, so there's two bits to the SR. They got over 400 seats between the two bits. Um, there's the main part of the SR. They got 17 and a half million votes and 360 seats. And there's the left of the SR, which had kind of shifted their support largely to the Bolsheviks, and they, they picked up uh, just under 3 million votes and picked up 40 seats. The Bolsheviks got just under 10 million votes and 175 seats. The national minorities uh, got 8.3 million and 99. Uh, the cadets, uh, who would actually be um, gone to be made illegal by the Bolsheviks, uh, won 2 million votes and 17 seats, and, and the Mensheviks. Um, kind of uh, as Trotsky had said they would be, uh, uh, rather in the dustbin of history, with only 1.2 million votes and 16 seats. Now, Lenin was not going to go back to an idea of dual authority with his with the Bolshevik Soviet running alongside um, a, a constituent assembly, uh, and it, it, this assembly was uh, it dissolved at gunpoint on that on the 5th of January after it set, sat for one day. And we go back to a, a statement that Lenin had said at the time of the revolution that he would make no fetish of democracy. So the numbers didn't fall as he wanted them to do, so he did away with it. Uh, he wasn't interested in democracy, he wasn't interested uh, in this as, as a vehicle for, for driving uh, the revolution and Bolshevik control forward, so he just did without it. And, and the, the, we would get this kind of hardcore group of revolutionaries that we've seen um, as the commissars, that they were going to run Russia. There's, a, there's a further decrees in December. There's the nationalisation of the banks. Uh, there's the, the democratisation of the army. Uh, officers were elected by the soldiers rather than uh, rather than the old ranks, which were all abolished. Saluting and all the decorations associated with the army uh, were also removed. Uh, there was nationalisation of church land, and again that was distributed uh, amongst the people. Uh, marriage and divorce were now civil matters, and, and therefore were out of the control of the church. Uh, and there was the formation of the Supreme Economic Council to try and start coordinating economic activity. So we start to see a degree of socialism in action in terms of the, the December decrees. Now, not all of this went uh, completely smoothly, and, and there, there were some significant elements of opposition. So although the Bolsheviks had seized power to claim they actually genuinely controlled Russia, it's a bit of a stretch at this point. And it won't really be till after the civil war is over that, that, that we can firmly state that the Bolsheviks are in full control. A lot of the initial, uh, uh, initial opposition came from within these institutions that the Bolsheviks had seized. So they seized control of the uh, of government, but the civil servants in many cases refused um, to work for the Bolsheviks, uh, and refused to carry out their demands, and therefore the machineries, the bureaucracy of government, came to a kind of a grinding standstill. And they nationalised banks, but they, a lot of bankers refused to, to uh, refuse finance the, the new government. Um, they refused access to to the cash reserves. It, it took ten days for, for uh, the Bolsheviks to, to gain to secure control of the state bank, and only then they did it through the threat, threat of armed force. Now. There were a number of Bolsheviks, Stalin amongst them, who'd been quite noted for their, their exploits as bank robbers, um, not all that many years before. It's one of the ways in which the, the Bolsheviks had raised funds. Um, so we can say this again, uh, the, the, the irony of all of this, uh, eventually the, the Bolsheviks end up in control of the banks, but they do end up at the control of the banks at the end of a gun. Um, 
Now Kerensky, who who had in my um, October Revolution video, I told, told you eventually he's going to end up in exile. Well, he doesn't end up in exile immediately. He he um, he fled Petrograd and he set up a, he, in this car that he'd taken from the embassy, and he, he ends up in a place called Gachina, uh, which is about 30 miles south of Petrograd. Now he actually had quite a sizable army with him. He's included uh, 18 Cossack regiments. A group of SR who were armed and willing to fight, a group of cadets and, uh, and army officers. Now, Lenin at this point doesn't really hold a great deal of military power. He has no direct control um, over the army. Um, and many of the Petrograd garrison who had been so key in, in the events of 1917 had started leaving and going back to their homes, largely in the countryside. So there was a, a real chance that the Bolshevik Revolution could end at this point with Kerensky just marching back into Petrograd at the head of an army and, and just taking power back by force, just as the, uh, as the Bolsheviks had seized power by force themselves in October. There was resistance across Russia. And again, we have to remember that the October Revolution ostensibly takes place in Petrograd, not, ev not everywhere at the same time. Uh, and we see at the end of the year, we saw fighting between uh, those lords of the provisional government and those who were lords of the Bolsheviks in Moscow, in, in Moscow including heavy fighting um, near the Kremlin. In, either, uh, uh, in other places, such as Kiev and Kazan uh, and, and Smolensk, uh, we see strong resistance to Bolshevik control. And so there is fighting and, and, and struggle in multiple places across Russia. The railway and communication workers actually went on strike protesting against this creation of a single party um, state. I mean, and, and control of the railways is going to prove to be absolutely vital to the Bolsheviks. And it's, it's something that, again, they've, they've had strong degree of, of influence amongst the rail workers um, up until this point. We saw that with the Kornilov affair, for example. Um, now, the Bolshevik position therefore looked rather bleak. So they'd seized power with relative ease, but now holding on to power looked like it was going to be a whole different kettle of fish. It looks like it's going to be an awful lot harder. So what were they going to do about all this opposition? Well, some of it was, was again, a degree of moderation that, that Lenin was forced to accept the idea of inter-party talks uh, to try and find some kind of solution with the other parties. And again, some of it was, it was a bit of um, intrigue and, and and infiltration into Kerensky's troops. And there were some pro-Bolshevik Bolshevik men who got in within Kerensky's troops and then they managed to agitate uh, and they managed to get some of Kerensky's troops to defect to the Bolsheviks, wink, uh, weakening Kerensky's position and strengthening that of the Bolsheviks. And there was a skirmish in between Kerensky's men and, um, uh, and those who were loyal to the Bolsheviks uh, 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 on the outskirts of Petrograd. Uh, this, the, the workers and soldiers loyal to the Bolsheviks managed to push back uh, Kerensky's men. In major towns and cities, the Bolsheviks managed to establish control. Uh, again, they were a, an incredibly dedicated group. They were armed. They were able to to win that will initially against other people. They reclaimed control of the railways. Um, they did, however, not control it any, in any way, really, at this point, the countryside. There were things they had done that had pleased um, the peasants, but I think a lot of the peasants as we saw with the election results, we've been much happier to have the SR running things than the Bolsheviks. Lenin suggested that there would be this coalition with a, a, other um, a, other socialists. You have the left wing of the SR to join uh, the Southern Akam, uh, uh, but they were still expected to follow his lead. Lenin wasn't willing to share power. He wanted to, to kind of bring people together by going, look, I, I'm bringing this other group in, but he wasn't he wasn't willing to share ideas and, 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 and discuss things with them. They, they could come in and join. But again, he's incredibly single minded. They would do as he said, no questions asked, or uh, there would be trouble. And there was trouble. And, and the, the, the Bolsheviks had to use all kind of methods to try and keep control. So whilst we've seen earlier in the decrees and at the end of, of 17, we've kind of got all this lovely stuff about kind of land for the peasants and, and, and sensible working hours for the workers and democratization of this and improved gender equality on that. 
what we start to see here really is, is, is a mass suppression. So we, we see the establishment of the Cheka, which we've already mentioned, um, to give it its full name, the All Rush Russian Commission for the Suppression of Counter-Revolution, Sabotage and Speculation, which is why uh, historians and people at the time called it the Cheka, because uh, it's much easier to say. Uh, and we, with all this, we see the imprisoning of, of leading cadets, and, and the cadet party was made illegal, was seen as a bourgeois party. Uh, the right wing of the SR and, and members and, and Mensheviks were also uh, imprisoned in, in December 17. There was a purge of the civil service. Th those who were obstructive or hostile to the Bolsheviks were thrown out of the civil service or, or arrested and imprisoned. And for those who were replacing them, what was key was your loyalty to the Bolsheviks, not your ability. Um, and so the civil service gets going again, but there's a huge amount of expertise that is lost at this point. And it, all anti-Bolshevik newspapers, part the, any newspaper supporting other parties, uh, were, were closed down and banned. Uh, there was a huge amount of propaganda attacking uh, the bourgeoisie. Um, the campaign against these class enemies was actually quite effective in turning a fairly lawless uh, and angry set of, of workers and soldiers. It, it, it gave them a focus. It kind of turned them against the, the middle and upper classes rather than against um, the government. And they used this uh, as reason to, to loot uh, houses uh, and, and essentially uh, take what they wanted from, from the, the wealthier parts of Russian society. And anyone accused of being a member of the bourgeoisie was, was likely to be arrested or beaten uh, and robbed and, and generally treated appallingly badly. So not a good time to, if you'd made a success of yourself in the, uh, towards the end of the Tsarist period, um, or, or you came from a, a, a wealthier family, then, then this wasn't a great time to be around in Russia. Now, all this seemed effective to a point, but it, it's important to remember that A, the Bolsheviks lost the November election, and B, it was gonna take four years of civil war before they fully controlled Russia. So they had taken some big steps in terms of establishing their power, but their power is not absolute by the time we get into January of 1918. I hope that's been helpful for you and given you lots of information about those early months of the Bolshevik uh, regime. If you've enjoyed it, then please hit, hit the, the, the like button. If you have any um, comments or questions, then probably, please leave um, those below. Uh, and if you haven't already, then please do subscribe to the channel. There's going to be lots more uh, videos on this topic. There's also a series of videos on uh, other bits of history, including the, uh, the Tudors uh, on uh, modern Britain, 51 to 2007, uh, and on the, um, the history of the American Civil War, the build up to the war. Uh, the war itself and the period after known as Reconstruction. And alongside all of that, there is an enormous amount of um, a, a video on A-level politics, if that's something else you're interested in or, or studying. And it looks at UK politics and also US politics as well. So thank you very, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully there is plenty of other stuff to uh, inform and infuse you on the channel. Thank you very much again.